this is for the rest of us. Uh, and our, I guess you could label it as our, our launch episode for the dedicated channel. We have two incredible artists and good friends of mine, Paul Medina and George Oswalt, um, here. And we're going to talk about a multitude of things, I'm sure, because that's what we do when we get together. How are you guys doing today? Great. Good. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, not a problem. Paul is a, a past guest on um, Life is Art, our Life is Art podcast. And I thought it would be really cool to get um, get us together and start these conversations that have more to do with uh, our society, less about art. But I think that we have a creative perspective on um, on all of those things. So sit back and let's discuss. Okay, so we are sitting here um, and a, a topic came up. As artists, we're still living in the world and we still see all of this crap going on as far as the wars that are popping up and all that. And I wanted to pose the question to um, both you, Paul, and George. Has all of this darkness affected your work? Ukraine, there's a war. Um, Israel, there's probably going to be a regional situation. And we're, we're forgetting about Taiwan. Taiwan's sitting over there, um, and most Americans don't even know it. It's, it's kind of like we've got this three-way proxy war going on. I don't know about you, Paul, I know about you. You kind of, you know, you, you're very, you feel all of this stuff. And I, I understand anxiety and all of that. And we manifest it different, but I think we're all feeling it. So I wanted to know what you guys are going through, or if anything, with all of this stuff. And how's it affecting your creativity? I don't think it's affecting my creativity. Um, I've been pretty constant both yep. in content and in materials and imagery for a long time. But you'd have to be brain dead right now for it not to affect you in some ways. And it's not just the wars. It's just, you know, the the shootings, yeah. the mass murders. Yeah. It's all taking a really large toll. And it's not just here in the United States. It's all over the world. And I think that collectively, we're all kind of holding our breath a little, you know, like, is this, is this actually going to explode? And, you know, yeah. oh, and I, and of course, you know, mentioning the uh, political bullshit that's going on in America. That's a lot of shit to, to think about. Yeah. I don't try to, I don't think I you know, consciously worry about it. Of course, I have conversations with people about it all, but uh, there's definitely a stress uh, that I think uh, is just right underneath the surface of a lot of people. You know, it's, it's funny. A lot of Americans are worried equally, but they're worried about different things. And, um, George, you're going to find this interesting. I have started having conversations with Uber drivers because, you know, I travel, travel primarily by Uber because none of them will shut up. So I'm like, I might as well be constructive about it. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. Whenever we get into, you know, the skinny of politics or just the world, because everybody, you know, the older they get, they say the same thing. And I find myself saying it, too. The world's going to shit. It's, it's in a handbag. I say that now more than I ever have. But the reason that it's going to, you know, complete hell as far as they're concerned, man, it's interesting. None of the reasons are the same. So I'm looking at, okay, so this American thinks this is important. This American thinks that is important. But one thing that we do real quick, and I've done it, I'm, I'm guilty of it, is I, I've said, why are you thinking about that? You need to be thinking about, but that's not how this thing works. Well, I, I, you know, I've been affected since I was in grade school, you know, the communist scare. Uh, I used to have dreams of Chinese coming through my window at age five, and now it might come true to a certain extent. I mean, I'm over-exaggerating, but I've always been very conscious of the social deconstruct of society, you know, throughout my life. Uh, I had a Russian history class in high school, and we did current events, so I've always been on the pulse of what's been going on. So it definitely affects me in such a big way. Uh, 
uh, not so much into my art, although my sarcasm and and uh, some of my themes uh, kind of traverse that in a way that's oblique, but but I'm very conscious of that pulse that's going on politically in our society, and I'm not too happy about it, but because I, I don't have a lot of control, I, I have to find other ways to, uh, you know, mitigate that, that fear. And so I, I no longer have fear like I did when I was young, because I know I've, I've lived long enough and I see this span of time and know that this is historical. When Trump got elected, I, I, the first thing I did, I was so aghast that I had this book on Cleopatra and I was reading that and going, oh, yeah, it's the same old thing. It's been going on oh, yeah. millenniums. So You know, I called that election, right? I mean, before it even, I you, called the entire thing. You probably did, and, yeah. I, and I wish I would have listened to you <laughs> because I was optimistic this is not going to happen, but it did. And, you know, I, in fact, I formed a, a loose group with uh, Roger Linky and Bill Bird. We, we three gathered for six months after that election to somehow make sense of what was going on. And out of that, Roger Linky, speaking of art, did a whole new show of music in response to be Trump being elected. So I thought that was pretty fascinating yeah. because of our conversations yeah. and trying to, you know, what was happening. And, and yesterday they were saying that, oh, well, Trump is a fascist. We were talking about he was a fascist as soon as he was elected. That is obvious, you know. So I've seen this repeated, you know, and again, being an older dude, it's not like uh, you're you're senile. You you see things and you feel things in a breath of timeliness. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but you know the thing is, or how I look at it, it's America as as the elite country in the world. You know, um, we've really been isolated. Yeah. About things, I remember. Uh, you know, at the, at the very, very beginning that this whole Trump thing was like, that's, that's, uh, that's a dictatorship shit. You know, he was talking that and I, and there were people that I knew that were going, oh, it can't, basically it can't happen here. It can't, well, you know, it, it is happening here. I think with me, with me, I think that it's always on my mind mm -hmm. and me too. Making art is a way to escape from that. I do, I do. It's not only escape, but but you're also addressing it yeah. in your own way. You're well, making yeah. sense. Yeah, you're making sense of it. You know, I, I, I it's kind of odd though that a lot of people here we are in in the room. We're clearly affected by what's going on in the world, but our art is remaining independent of that. Right. And then you have, you know, pieces like, I guess the most... I'm not a propagandist, you know. Yeah. I think that's... And, and that's that that serves maybe okay if you're in the right cause, but, but to me, there is the human condition, and it's not just politics, you know. I mean, it's all politics in the sense that we navigate in, in our world in a political way. We're not affiliated with a party, but we're... You know, in in order to interact with the public and society, you have to be somewhat political. You know, I I think so. Um, but I also I also think this. I think we what you think is wrong, <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> we choose sides, and I think we try to make this. We try to come to terms with it and make sense out of this by having a good guy and a bad guy. Exactly. And, you know, just for the record, I don't like anybody. I don't like either party right now. Mm -hmm. And I can give you legitimate reasons as to why I don't like either party. But most people can't give you legitimate reasons as to why they either like or hate the party that they're for or against. I can. You can or can't? Can. Well, you see, you're, but that's different. You know, you're, you're not typical as far as a lot of Americans. You know, Maybe. Well, I don't know. I think there's a lot of people out there that are shaking their head going how did this happen but they don't they don't know why i mean i'll, I'll give you an example i'm not even i know why <laughs> <laughs> i've thought a lot about this shit okay well, well here's an example 
so I was talking with somebody that I that I love and respect about um, the um, uh, Taiwan and why we would, you know, what that what the implications are. I said, do you even know why we're concerned about that little island? Well, we want to make sure that it's free. I was like, well, that's bullshit. That's not what it is. Little transistors and little computer things come from there. And if they get control over, guess what they can do? They can decide if they sanction us. Um, they can they can pretty much squeeze us if we don't have either our own ability to make them. And this person was had no idea. So there's this ongoing thing of everybody believing and wanting to believe that we're in a country that doesn't have an agenda, that that isn't humanitarian. It's like everything that we do is humanitarian. No, it's not. No, it's not. And I always question that. But I question it with every administration. What I found is that when, you know, when you get screwed around, some people do it uh, with a smile. Some people do it with a scowl. My thing is this. You can smile at me all day, but I'm going to ask you, you know, that that device that you're planning on sticking up in me, I kind of said no to that. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be a OK. I noticed that a lot of us are are okay if we're getting probed with a smile. One kiss. Or a kiss, yeah. But they've forgotten that you're not supposed to get probed at all. I mean, that's just my opinion. You're not supposed to get... You're not supposed to, you know... We're talking metaphorically. We're talking metaphorically. <laughs> we're talking metaphorically. But a lot of people don't even understand the erosion of things that they are supposed to have access to. The fact that we're watching two different news channels means that the news has failed us because the news is supposed to be what? Impartial, right? Originally, oh, they used to just report it. That, well, that, that's a fallacy to you. Again, if you're a good historian, there's always been uh, news sources from the 17th, I mean, the 18th century, 19th century were partisan they had, you know, the money uh, was the foundation of that publication. Uh, our arc is like every other country. We have our self-interest, and that's the priority. And it's not really to benefit uh, the, the individuals. It's a, to benefit the state. And so if you look at our uh, track record as far as the involvements, not just the major wars, but into South America and other interfering in the whole thing. And when you think about the Middle East, if we even get to the Middle East and you, you look at, you know, England and France already divvying it up after, you know, before World War I was ended, they were already, you know, had the idea how things were going to be divided. And that's the problem that we have now. All that planning prior to the end of World War I is still infected by that planning, and you know, and, and we picked up a little bit of that because we got involved, you know, because our lust for oil too. So uh, uh, again, if you're a student of history, uh, and I'm not talking about high school history, I'm talking about where you do your own research and you, oh yeah, and and the nuance of of the deals that are being made and stuff. So well, and we also uh, live. America is an oligarchy. Oh yeah, and it's uh, and it, and it, and once again, it's like I've thought that for a long time in my head, and but I never really thought of it as. I mean, we condemn the oligarchy in Russia, right? Right. Everything is for the dollar for a few, and we're exactly the same way. Uh, we and, do it with a smile, though. Well, and, and our, after our, a while, that doesn't matter <laughs> our, our, our our true religion has always been money yeah it has not been no well you're right. let's, let's we're talking about the human condition right this is something that's been going on ever since there's been human beings on earth this is nothing new right uh i think that in america or this is how i see it in america being kind of isolated in our superiority you know that's how that's what was taught to us in schools and stuff, that we didn't recognize the rise of a, a banana republic yeah. in our backyard. Yeah, it can't happen here. That only happens in other back countries. This kind of a thing. 
But it's been going on. That, the buildup of the oligarchy, has been here really for a very, very long time. It's just now, what was it? What is it that six Americans have more money than the rest of the, of the people in the United States? Yeah. I mean, that says a lot about, you know, why we, well, just the whole thing about Cheney wanting to go to uh, Iraq. He made billions out of it. And this is a vice president. If you look at the people that are making the money, you know, they're also the ones telling us what we should do. It's like... And what we want. Yeah. Right. No. I'll tell you what. The, um, I was talking with somebody about, um, you know, we have, you know, things like TikTok, our attention spans are getting shorter. It's almost impossible to hide the truth. Like if you go looking for the truth of some the unequivocal truth, it's floating around out there on the internet. It's too late to get rid of all of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not being a conspiracy theorist or anything, but I'm kind of wondering if the reason that they're feeding us things that make our attention span shorter is so that we don't have the attention span to hear the actual truth, because it takes longer than 30 see, seconds this, to tell what's going on. You know, I've said this over and over and over again, and it's become so cliche, but it's so true. It's like what's going on is the epitome of the whole concept of uh, Orwell's 1984. It is if you it go back. Have you ever read it? Oh yeah. Okay, I just read and read it too. not too long ago, and it's like how to rule the masses. How do you, it is? It is uh, uh, recreational drugs, the 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 airways controlling the airways. Uh, I mean, just it's like well, Trump doesn't read. And maybe Bannon, Steve Bannon or somebody like that read that and said, well, if we can do this and we can do this and we can do this, then we can control the masses. And, you know, uh, somebody came on some show the other day that I read that that he was a Republican. He says, honestly, it's only a third of the Republicans that are major Trumpers, right? Which means they will never Turn their back on it. Well, you have a whole uh, uh, neocon class that's, and then, you know, over here, and then you have, you know, ultra liberals over here that are doing things that even, you know, more center people are, are like, okay, kind of knock it off. You're, you're, you're so far over here. So we've got extremes, but they're the loudest ones. Yeah. And that's what that guy was saying. Yeah. Um, the thing that I think bothers me about a lot of this stuff is, I hear you on the way you feel about Donald Trump. I'm not going to change anything that you say. That's not even what I'm trying to do. For me, Donald Trump is just a, a symptom of something else. Um, he's a reaction to something else. But when we start talking about real time, somehow we manage to talk about people that aren't even around. Like in real time, I can tell you what's happening as far as authoritarianism. I, as a man, can't say certain things online or I'll be shadow banned. Whereas a woman might be able to say it and vice versa. There are things that we're regulated in saying. We are censoring words in our vocabulary. And none of us is asking, well, why are these words censored? I tried to type in, I can't remember what it was, but I tried to type in a word. And it kept giving me words that had nothing to do with the sentence that I was trying to construct. And I had my spell check on. So I'm like, well, let me put other words in. Things that, that are... Things that are offensive or might be offensive is being regulated by somebody outside of us. If that's not controlling free speech, and I can tell you that from an administration standpoint, everybody's screwing us in that way. And then we get mad and we personify certain individuals, and then we stop looking at the people that are that are happening in real time. I look at Chicago, Chicago, parts of Chicago, they're you know, we, we will, we're very quick to say, okay, well, racism, no, let's look at what's actually happening. I don't know if people still have the ability to look at what's actually happening in a situation as opposed to being directed by something to redirect their anger. It's like the ultimate red herring being thrown over there, and we keep going. And I've got proof of that. 
I don't understand why we're not investigative in our in our mindset anymore. I knew more as a kid, or, or people around me knew more as a kid about Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan when they were running against each other than the kids now. We can't, and I say kids, I'm talking, you know, some of these folks are 25 years old. They don't know who anybody in office is. Some of them even referred to Joe Biden as the old guy. What the hell is his name? What did you vote for him for? Well, because it's not Trump, at least. Well, hell, 10 years ago, we were all, he was in rap videos. We love the guy. The guy runs and ends up being a stain on the establishment. Well, he's racist. Well, what happens when somebody else runs? And they're not part of the establishment. Well, I think... And it's somebody you agree with. Not not just, you know, we, we it's easy to get mad at him because what? All right, we don't agree with certain things. I think it's what's going on is going to be a, the new normal for a long time. I hate that. I'll probably never come out of the house. Well, you know, I mean, I do. I think it's like, uh, okay, free speech, okay? Human beings created that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, uh, it, in regards to it being the most important thing, even if it is the most important thing. It's, it's what it is. We are evolving into another. It's like when uh, the computers and AI and all that kind of stuff. How is that going to affect art? Yeah, you know, and it is affecting art. Uh, it's not affecting me per se, or probably maybe tens of thousands of artists. Oh yeah, most that, painters and traditional uh, artists is but, not really. But at the same time. Uh, uh, it's there. Yeah. It's not going to go away. Uh, I think Trump will go away eventually. I mean, you m mentioned something that I think is worth mentioning again, is that uh, Trump may be the the target right now for what's wrong in America, in my opinion. Uh, but we've never been here before. We've, America has not been at this crossroads at this level. Ever. I mean, I know that... Well, we came close. I, I, right. I, I, I listened to uh, Rachel Maddow last night on Colbert, and she's written this book about how we were swinging towards Germany, and this, the, the best-selling book in 1940 or 41 was a pro-German approach. So we've come very close in and out of the situation, and, and even though Trump represents a bigger, uh, I guess, uh, area of thought, he still, with his behavior, has changed us in a way. Yes. The, 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 the tempo, because there doesn't seem to be any monitoring this guy, and I don't understand why. I mean, he's clearly broken the law in many ways, and I, I don't find it all political in nature. And that they that we keep on putting up with this bullshit. I, if I said those kind of things in court, then I would have been you're in jail. So there's there's no justification in allowing this motherfucker to do what he's done to the American people, the, the American psyche. And I, I, I was in that. <laughs> well, devil's advocate, Trump was just a nasty character. You know, he's like, I know. you know, if you want to, if you want to go and you know find a, a prostitute and do you, you know reprehensible things, that's your guy for the job. But my question is, but I don't want to live with him daily. I don't want to. You know, here's my thing. I mean, personality wise, I I dislike the guy more personality than anything. It's like, dude, you make us look horrible on the world front. I'm not even worried about. What he appears to America uh, as representing America, I resent him encroaching on my reality, and I don't like it. Well, see, I feel the same way about Biden right now. Yeah. You know, it's and it's like we we have these conversations about people we don't like, right? But when we start talking about people that we do like, there's there's a Who kind do you of like in politics. Right? I don't like anybody right now. My thing is, is it's it's so. 
I shouldn't be able to predict the political landscape as as a as a uh, an armchair activist. Who and say, I who says? Well, I'm, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying on paper. I mean, on paper, you should not be able to perform brain surgery because that's not your profession. Well, political science isn't my profession. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. But but the thing is, I've predicted everything that has happened. When I was arguing with people about Biden, they were like, well, so you're a visionary. We well, love you for that. A visionary, <laughs> as you might think that I am, I'm not very smart. This is a case of common sense, oh, which, yeah. which a lot of people don't. Well, this like there. And I think, and this is an, an, an other whole issue uh, that we probably won't have time to get into, and that is uh, it's immoral. The morality card, uh, no matter how much you don't like uh, Biden, I think he's a moral human being. I have in a, in a very, very tough situation. I have no evidence of it. I have evidence that he smiles and the effect that the administration has had on me personally. I'm just talking about as a working class blue collar guy. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been good. I okay, who has? Um, I will say this economically, the guy before us kind of had a better effect on me and other people. You mean are, Trump? I have to say it. I mean, oh I. Oh my God. That doesn't, God. but here's the, here's the deal. Did I vote for him? No. You know why? Because, because he's an asshole. No, I don't care if you're an asshole. I care about your effectiveness. It's, it's, it's about the character of the, of a person. It's about the effectiveness of a person for me. See, like, like right now, we're talking about and what character or the lack of character uh, dictates that. Well, the lack of character with the smile is just as bad as the lack of character with the scowl. And here's what here's what here's what I'm saying. I think we get wrapped up in personalities and we personify things that are good, especially when we're not affected by certain things. You know what was important to me? Healthcare. Yeah. Healthcare, which Obama gave us. And you know what? It got my vote. Oh, I, I would have. I would have voted for him whether or not. See, my bottom line is, and I think we all have what different kind of lines. human being is he or she or her? What cut? Because everything springs from that. Well, everything springs from that, but the the content of who you are is by the demonstration of what you do, not how polite you are, not how great you look. Because the average American, I'll tell you this, somebody told me, they were like, I don't like Kamala Harris. I don't, I don't, Joe Biden's too old. I said, well, who do you want to, who do you want to throw in there? Let's throw Gavin Newsom in there. All right, go ahead. Why? Well, he's hot. He's handsome. We're, we're and, and he's handsome. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well my, my thing is, is okay, Gavin Newsom's hot. He's handsome. His policy. When I start talking policy, and it's not that I'm even a liberal to you. Yeah. It's not even that I'm a great debater, but when I start talking, arguments start crumbling, and this is where Nathan normally gets yelled at. Well, here, I I beg to differ on Trump, because uh, to me, the job of the presidency is you're the CEO of this country, and his, his policies are peppered with some of his uh, ethical concerns, which there is no ethical concerns for him. It's, it's all individual. It's me, me, me. He has no concern for the country. He's not running the country for the betterment of people. Right. And if you were uh, benefited from that, I don't think any administration does. I, well, I, I disagree on that. I think more, even more than the hated George W. for me, uh, Trump has trumped that yeah. That he is so uh, self-centered, and there there is no real benefit. There might have maybe something that slipped by and was beneficial, but his overall arc, if it doesn't if it doesn't benefit, if it's the overall arc of his being as a president is nil to me. Yeah. It is negative. He has no approach. He has no. There is no benefit for this country to go forward and and to do good things because of him. And it has nothing to do, I don't, you know, you can have a bad guy in there, he's bad, you know, in his personal life, but if he's efficient in his job, he was not efficient in his job. 
That is my point of contention. What I, part of his policy did you absolutely hate? Well, he started off with giving uh, tax Brilliant. breaks to the rich. That really is number one. Okay, his his uh, approach to migration and immigration, building a fucking wall, wasting money on that. I, I mean, I can go on and on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, there's nothing there's nothing positive about Trump administration for me. Well, and and here's the illustration of being. I'm sorry, Paul. I mean, to cut you off. here's the illustration of us having a debate. <laughs> having a debate. Here's the uh, whereas I can illustrate something. You look at things a bit differently because there's races I that you're not I in. Agree. And me as a person, but I'm Greek. Don't forget that. <laughs> What immigration, and I'll put it like this, um, me personally, you know, as as a black man, yeah, we generally, and it, it, there's for there's a variety of reasons. That's its own its own thing that we could talk about, but for a variety of reasons, we end up competing not only against what's established here, but we also end up competing against what's coming in. So when you have immigration, along with people that are getting, um, I don't even want to call it privileges. There's certain things that you have to do for people when they come into the country that don't have it. Well, you don't get it out of thin air. I agree. And when these when people start excelling, you know, when you have a number of people, and you know, there's been arguments, you know, that that are on both sides of the fence. Well, you know, African American people just do better. And I I have one leg in there and one leg out of there. When you create more people, then you create less opportunities. And it's always the assumption, and this is one part that I have with, with a difficulty I have with a lot of liberal people. You say that you are for these people, but then you say things like, and I don't even think that we're aware that we say it. I've done it before. Well, they're taking jobs that you don't want. I understand. Well, what you don't understand about those people is they're not coming over here to be your janitors and be your, you know, your, your, your goddamn car hops. They're coming for something. And we see that when you have young Rwandan students come over. They outpace all of us. Uh, African students and Southeast Asian um, uh, students are outpacing everybody else, I believe. Well, see, you, I think what you're going down is different than what I'm saying. I'm talking about the way that he's proceeding to, you know, what he's delivering. What he's delivering and building these these false promises of the wall that's going to mitigate that is not going to happen. There, I'm I'm not into open borders. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm conservative in balancing my budget. I've always balanced my budget. So when you talk about conservative, there there's not huh, there's not liberal or conservative. There's a balance of all that. You know, I have my concerns about America, uh, and and the things that we need to do. To properly address what we need to do, but but it doesn't really fall into I'm only liberal and I'm only conservative here. It has to do with the practicality, and that's what I'm talking about. Trump, he is not a good CEO of this country. He well, his policies are are based on how can I benefit personally, and that's it. Well, billions of dollars spent right now says that they are two sides of the same coin. Right. Because unfortunately, the amount of money that's been spent right now, it dwarfs that damn wall. I know. And where's that money coming from? But I think we can't, you know, it's... We're, we're, it always does. Well, we just print more. We could always <laughs> find... We could always find money to go to war. We could always find money... Well, that's the end of it. ...to give tax breaks to the very wealthy. Well, but as a, as a working man, I'm going to tell you what taxes are doing to me right now. If I paid the way that I was supposed to, Paul, I'd be knocking on your door. I'd be like... And, and I will say this. Taxes have, have increased. In liberal cities, they're, they're almost inhabitable, especially like with exactly. California. They're coming over to Texas. Now, here's the madness of it. The same policies that put you in, in that, that situation where you're migrating, and there's a cool guy, I got to let y'all hear it, a guy named Aaron, he said I could say his name. He said that he would be a part of the, um, you know, the Uber thing and all that. He came from California. He didn't put two and two together. This guy's still voting for the same uh, mindset that made it so that in California, you have to have a permit that you have to pay for to tile your own bathroom. Yeah, I know. 
Bill Maher talks about this shit all the time. Well, but in California. But but the craziness is, as you come in, Texas is becoming more and more blue. Why are you voting for more and more blue when you just ran for more and more blue? At some point, we got to get beyond red and blue and start thinking about, okay, well, what does this mean? To me, one more time, the bottom line is you get, in a lot of ways, you get different product from a moral person or an immoral person. I think it goes down, and, I'm, and I don't want to get biblical here because I don't believe in that thing, but what is right what is right? For, what is the right thing to do with for as many people as possible? That's to me. That's one of the things that a good president does. And that's kind of what I'm saying. Is that the CEO aspect of that? That you're running a com country like a company, and it's not. It's about profit, and the profit is the benefit. To the people. Well, and then if the profit goes to the people, right, that's a good thing, right. But we have six individuals, right, that owe as much wealth as the rest of us in the United States. What is their? I wonder what their political affiliation is. To be honest, just the six people. I, I just wonder what their. It's well, not, it's, I'm not going anywhere with. It. I'm just saying. I wonder. Obviously, who they, uh, the the Titans are conservative. Conservatively, uh, in doubt. Well, no, no. I mean, they're they're they're, they're conservative when it comes to business and stuff like that. I don't know. I I don't, I, I know that this may be you know a, a, a leftover from my um, my liberal, uh, you know, youthful time of what is right and what is wrong. Uh, but I think that if you look at it as here we're animals and, you know, we're yeah. everything, you know, how, why we're here the way we are, uh, there, to me, he ha Trump has no moral code. And uh, as I said a moment ago, everything springs from that. I've said I said it from the very very beginning that if Trump had not overly stated his racism, he would never have been president. The people that voted for him hate the same kind of people that Trump says he hates. Well, See, I don't even know if that's I, he may not even be a racist, but if you're using racist uh, shit. To rile up a base, what's worse? If you really believe that shit, or you're well, just using it to I, get what you want? Here's the thing. The base that he riles up is ugly. You know, they're a very ugly base, but liberals have a base, too. Are we ugly? Well, some of you are. And here's the deal. I'm, a, I'm an independent, so I say some of you, some of you are. But I have a very liberal, and y'all know me. I mean, I got a very liberal slant, but I'm, I'm, I'm sick of some of the things we do. And I focus a lot on us. On, on the the liberal side because I've always thought that that was the side with the most potential. Initially, that's what I've always thought. Up until recently in research, and I'm not saying that the conservatives are any different. I'm saying there's something wrong here. But my thing is, you know, we were talking about a president being concerned about all of his people. I have no issue with LGBTQ, but I have an issue that we focus on things that are for a very specific group of people instead of things that would bring LGBTQ or that, that are going to affect LGBTQ, hetero, cisgender, whatever you want to call it. We focus on site-specific things that keep them thinking a certain way and in a certain friend. I think a lot of that, I blame uh, the media. But who controls the media? Who makes the some of those, some of those well, six or eight that have all the money? And well, but 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 here here's here's the thing: it's the the policy as far as LGBTQ, it didn't start with with conservative people because you know a lot of you know you know the deal. It started with liberal minded people. Matter of fact, it did start with with Obama. I get it. We all deserve equal access to everything. I don't think that there's a damn human being in this country that doesn't deserve access to it. 
my question is, is what are you not getting that the rest of us aren't getting? I always ask that question. Here's the questions I ask. If I'm dealing with somebody who is, let's say, a feminist, how do you know when you've arrived? How do you know when part one of your ground game is done? How do you know when there's true equality? Well, nobody ever answers. I don't, think, you, I don't think there is a, an, an, an answer. I think that there is a metric to where you can establish something and then move on to the next phase. As far as LGBTQ, I, like I said, I don't have any problems. My issue is there is no discernible thing that society is holding from them. And I say this because I can't get hired looking for a job. I've gone into, and I won't say places, but I've gone into places where um, my female counterpart was treated better than me when I was asking the questions. There was almost this disdain for me. I've applied for places, and some of those places, one is an eatery, says we employ women only. And it's, it's not far from here. So my thing is this, are we just going to replace something with something that discriminated? We just recycle a lot of the worst parts about us. And then we say, well, it's A-OK because it's this disenfranchised group of people. Well, at some point, you're no longer disenfranchised. Women are fighting for their rights. But men are, men are right now, they're, they're being buried. They're not even competing. The problem is women are excelling. They're like kicking ass. They're, they're doing some tremendous things. But men aren't, they're, 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 they're receding. And they're part of the environment. Even white people. Oh, 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 young, young white yeah. men right now. Yeah, they're having, yeah, they're having major issues. Can we all be concerned about the country? Um, totally. And I think you do that by talking about things like a war is going to affect us all. All that shit that we all talk about, it goes out the window when we're faced with survival. Exactly. When are we going to focus on those things? And it doesn't have to just be war. We all want to eat. We all want a livable wage. We all want you're, those things. You're being too rational. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, why why don't we live in a utopian society? We never will. And what you're will it will we will human beings ever get to a point where that uh, everybody has the same freedoms and rights and uh, you know everything that comes with that? I don't think it will. It never has. It has, it, it, there are certain things that, that you, yeah, you can go, you could be uh, a Democrat and then something happened in the Democratic Party and it pisses you off. So you go to the Republican Party and then that, it's, we're talking about an animal that has certain traits uh, and a propensity towards greed you know, of all kinds, um, who's at, looking after themselves or their really close knit family. That I, I think that you you might be asking too much of the human race. And here's another thing. I mean, I think if we stop asking, we get less. And here's another thing to to kind of answer your question about those fringe groups, quote unquote. It's like the magician, and he misdirects. And that's what media does. That's what people uh, of power do. They want to misdirect us over here so they can go do that there. That is the answer to that question. Fair enough. No, I mean, I, I do. Fair I enough. think that there's a lot of stuff that we expect more than human beings right. could actually give. Yeah, I agree. And that, I mean, hey, like me agree. Well, we, 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 I'm we, just I'm this. No, but I mean, it's. I mean, I think it's that basic. Well, You're, you are asking. Uh, um, I think I think a measurable way of doing things is simply access. Not all of us are going to do to and hear me out on this. No, 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 no. Just let me back up a little bit. Your, your concerns about maleness. So I got out of grad school in '93. The same thing that you're talking about when I applied for schools to teach in colleges yeah. across the nation were female centric. So I've I've dealt with that on my own level. I'm another generation from you 
But I, you know, and I went through, uh, and, I, and I'm empathetic with all that. But, you know, being directly affected by that, I understand there's a certain resentment. And, but the, the bottom line is kind of what Paul was saying. We're, we're kind of fucked. Huh. Well, for me, it's, uh, unless you're part of the five or six that own the fucking world. For me, it's a, it's a, it's a degree of fear. You know, it's hard. I, I don't get mad at these, you know, at, at, at different groups of people because I have friends that I love I know. from these groups. You know, but see, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you know, think about it. Okay, maybe more. <laughs> but. <laughs> I should have, I spent my, I've been fortunate because most of my family have been liberal. Yeah. I, so I have that hereditary thing. Most of my family's been conservative. They just didn't know it. Right. <laughs> Until it was pointed out to the, but, but I, no, I, 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 you know, I've been watching this show uh, called, oh, Life on Planet Earth or something like that. It's a new one on uh, Netflix. If you haven't seen it, if you got Netflix, I do. Yeah, it's it's. I got to pay my Netflix bill. It's got Nor uh, uh, Morgan Freeman as the the God the <laughs> yeah narration. And what it is, it's about the 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 Starks and the Miss Starks of Earth and the human race, and you know. It's it's a fucking miracle, and I'm not talking about Jesus miracle, but it's it's amazing that we even exist. There's a book too called Sapiens that I read, and if you it, it talks about the whole yes, but the, this it, has gra I mean, and the yeah. Well, this this is a book as opposed yeah. to a program, but it it traces the same things I'm sure he's tracing. Right from the very origins and the kind of serendipity that happened with this evolving because there were other, you know, sapiens. Yeah. You know, we're homo sapiens, but there were other sapiens. Sapi oh, absolutely. Yeah, homo, you had homo erectus, homo... Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're not. Uh, and just homos. <laughs> and you're okay with it. You can you just strike down. <laughs> you can strike that. Well, I know I'm glinty. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but my point of bringing this evolutionary thing in okay. is that, what, Homo sapiens, 200,000 years, yeah, something like that? Yeah. There have been starts and false starts exactly. of life on this planet for uh, 450 billion years. We're still infants. Human beings are still infants. In regards to the evolution, that uh, evolutionary exactly. calendar, and that if we survive as as the planet, I'm just going to split what, this too. I figured out what, what I was going to do. I didn't want to. What split. will be uh, the basic human being at the time? Will there even be a, a, such a thing as a liberal, uh, open-minded person and th the opposite? Uh, and that's why I, I'm saying that that all, most of the stuff that we're talking about, in my view, is transitory. I think I think we have no we have no idea. Well, just like you know, everybody's on oh, since computers and shit like that, and AI and all this kind of stuff, and how that's going to change everything. Yeah, it's going to change shit. And the thing is, is that we can't. Uh, fortune tell us shit. Uh, we are at the end of the day just real smart <laughs> looking out from law. That's basically <laughs> that's what it is. And and then when I when you throw in this whole concept of morality that I have done, it kind of it seems like a fallacy because if we're just human beings and, you know, we're doing this and we're evolving a certain way and everything, we're still the basic human being we were at the, from the very beginning. Well, the survival, but, but yeah, but there's, we've evolved out of that, that jungle and, you know, and the hunter and gator, or another, that's what he created another jungle. Yeah. We, we've created this, this, this more abstract, you know, 
in this more evolutionary situation. And this is the things I grapple even with my art. I think about, you know, the animal that is me and how I'm reacting to this society and the illusionary things that are floating, you know, and, you know, again, truths and, and philosophical stances that have become, you know, from from the Greeks and, and the Chinese, you know, it's not just one society that's had philosophers, but it's an array of philosophy that's algamated into where we're at now. And we go on <laughs> the internet and, and get bits and pieces. But but we as artists, that that is what we do. We have consolidated a philosophical stance. And then when we go to do our practice, whatever that is, that is part of it. It is, it is our thoughts that have come together and some of the imagery, or my, mostly imagery for me, but you're doing 3D and you're doing 3D as well as, you know, flat imagery. We are consolidating those philo philosophical stances, you know, uh, and the way that we see society in, a, in such a way that is our individual take is because we don't have that $50 billion in our po pocket that we manifest some sort of power Correct. I was going to say control. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been pretty constant with my the, the conceptual aspect of what I do as an artist. I always try. I I want to make a connection with yeah. that individual uh, about things that don't separate us, but yeah, these human base human emotions that we all share. Uh, it gives me hope and I'm not saying that I have that concept in my, the, the hope is this concept that's overriding with me I'm actually not saying that but it I, I the idea it's like the the the, the show at uh, um, Untitled you know uh, there, it was I had people cry at the show of these really kind of ambiguous things that could be anything, you know, I mean, but they would, they were able, there was a lot of people that came to me and that was almost as good as the sales. But I mean, my point was that, is that it, I felt I had won, not, not, not the economic situation, but the idea that people you, you saw, communicate out a communication yeah. that they have felt the same way before themselves. And so, and I think that, I think that that's the bottom line. That's a lot of power too. I mean, to be able to create something uh, that people, especially that when it's not, you know, yeah, it, it's not literal. You didn't make this literal right. thing. And I think that, uh, that show really, really helped me because as older artists, we're always thinking about, well, are we still relevant relevant and stuff like that? It it made me feel real good about what I'm doing. But I don't think that you you know, you can take the man out of the jungle, but you can't take the all of the jungle out of the man. True. Exactly. Just in general. True. We are, you know, only two hundred thousand years old as a species. Uh in an infinite universe. And even, I mean, you know, they're in this show, and I know you know this, but, you know, they're talking about the freak accidents that change the course of not only life, but geographical shit, too. I mean, it's amazing that we can sit here with that thing in your hand and talk about this in, in, in somewhat of an abstract way, that... That in itself is so fucking amazing. Oh yeah, but yeah. you know, we're, we you can't you can't take the jungle out of us. We're gonna we're all going to. I was gonna say something earlier. You said something about Trump uh, back during the Nixon days, and up until then, that was you know that 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 was huge. That was you know seeing it on television in real time, all of that shit. And I worked for this man. Actually, I worked for his his, his uh, daughter, but he was always up at, the, uh, up at the shop and stuff. 
And I got into a conversation with him, shouldn't have, and he was from Czechoslovakia. He and his wife were from Czechoslovakia. And uh, he, he was saying, well, I love Nixon. And I'm going, and I should, you know, why am I say, asking him? And I said, well, why? Give me, give me an example. And he's because, because I made more money during Nixon than anybody else. And then I said, oh, you, so just fuck everybody else. And that's, to me, that's the basic difference in general. There's, there are exceptions. The, Demo the, the Republican Party believes that it is not their, exp the, the, uh, the government's uh, main goal is to take care of their people. I did it. I pulled myself up by the bootstraps. The, the opportunity, just the opportunity to make a fortune in this country is enough. And the Democrats that sometimes they are at, they're at fault of trying to give too much. Mm -hmm. And if I have to choose from this over here that, fuck you, I did it. It's not the, it's not the government's uh, 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 place to uh, take care of everybody, you know, welfare and they're cheating on this and all this kind of stuff. And another uh, uh, direction that have similar things that uh, I want everybody to do as well as be. Well, Republicans give uh, uh, corporate welfare, so I'll just oh yeah, I'll just put yeah. that in more welfare than the actual welfare. Exactly, that's my point. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny. <laughs> Both of us, all of us, have brought up the negative points. Well, I'm toot my own horn. I'm sorry, I want to make y'all mad, but I've noticed the only person in this room that's been able to say fuck both sides and recognizes the... Because I don't want to be a hopeless man. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not hopeless. I've got... I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you my position on this. We minimize, and right now, I will say this. My complete perspective, and all of our perspectives are valid because your experience is different. You're, and it's it's part of its generational, part of its racial, part of its a lot of things. But your perspective, when we're talking about the evil of the side that you support, is minimized. We recognize it real quick, and then when we're talking about the evil of something that we went in not liking, we're like, it's this great atrocious thing. I've pointed out that it's all fucking atrocious. And I'm not saying that there's a disdain against me for saying it's all atrocious, I, but it's... it's. Well, I, I tend to agree there. See, uh, I'm just not as adamant as you saying it's all fucked up. I, I, I think uh, there's more uh, sane Democrats than there are Republicans, but the system is all fucked up. So it's, I'm, reading a book, I, I'm reading a book right now called Mr. Texas, and it's a fictional aspect of Texas politics, and it's it is so so good. And this guy who writes for the New Yorker, uh, and he's done nonfiction, and he know he lives in Austin, so he knows what he's talking about. So, in this book, it indicates the system is fucked up, whether you're Democrat or Republican, and and it's a it's a miracle that we're even down the road as far as we are. So I don't know the answer to the utopia, wonderful country, and, and wonderful government, because I think, again, the animal comes out, and that's what really emphasizing the animals of these politicians and their, you know, basic uh, disregard for uh, elevating themselves. They they go straight to the core of their beliefs, and, 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 and then because people are— not a straight line, there are complexities to our personalities. That's true. So there's a complexity that's going on. So uh, the animals, the monkeys are, you know, are in Congress. <laughs>